This is Fight Fans Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cage Side Live. I am your humble host, the General Gino Morasco. We are back in business after some time away, and I am joined this time by Matt Roth of Bleacher Report fame. What's up, Roth? How you doing, man? Finally, the Roth has come back to SB Nation. <laughs> this is true. This is true because we're posted on Cage Side, and this yep. proves, I think, once and for all that the relationship between SB Nation and Bleacher Report is not as strained as people think it is, right? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, obviously if there was a time when people were talking about what Bleacher Report did and Bleacher Report was talking about what SB Nation did, there's a place to, to coexist. And obviously I still have connections to people at, at SB Nation. So we're you partners. Gave me the, yeah, man, we are partners. And we're partners because there are actual, like if you go to the, like Bloody Elbow and Mania after the jump, and I guess, well, everything's a jump now, but you go into the post, you'll see at the bottom more from our partners, and it'll be links to a bunch of Bleacher Report stuff. Which is crazy. Like, it's think weird about, like, to me. Like, last year when I was running uh, Head Kick Legend, never would have saw RIP. that. Ever. Yeah, yeah, rest in peace. Now it goes to Bad Left Hook. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, yeah, we're going to have, you know, I like, and that's, I used to say stuff about Bleacher Report because... There was a time definitely when it was kind of – it was a little out there. But they did so much revamping, bringing in Snowden, bringing in Botter, bringing in you. I mean yeah, they I mean, have I mean, a very I mean, respectable team now. Yeah, I mean bringing in me I, I guess. But like really bringing in Botter and Snowden like and my dog uh, Dwayne <laughs> Finley. Like, I got to put you over. Yeah, Finley, he's a good guy. He's a Quad City guy, man. I know him from around here. Yeah, I mean, like, but really, like, when I worked at Head Kick Legend, man, even in, like, Bloody Elbow, even when we were commenters on Bloody Elbow and Mania and all those places, like, we would talk so much shit about Bleacher Report, and Bleacher Report commenters were talking so much shit about us. Like, it was, like, a, like a real rivalry. Some of it was deserved. I mean, oh, some totally. of it, it's, it's the Mania versus BE thing. I mean, some of it's kayfabe, and some of it is very much not kayfabe. Now, it's a very... I don't know. The, since the SB Nation United switch, everything is a very uh, cohesive um, unit, I guess. I gotta put I gotta put SB Nation over because you know I don't, I don't want to get fired, and I gotta put you over. You said I'm not sure about me with BR, but you gotta get yourself over here. Yeah, I mean, like, look, I'm trying to be the humble champion. Ah, uh, okay. I'm trying when to I be John. You- I'm, I'm I'm trying to be the John Jones of the show. Oh my god. And I see Gino Fan69 has returned into the thread. I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh it's good to have my fan back, my one and only fan. Uh Chris Hines with the with the podcast crew assemble. Appreciate that. It's been a very long time. Um off the bat, and I don't know how many of you are in this thread versus the WWE main event live blog thread, which you should be in this one because, you know, fuck main event. Um we're gonna have a caller here in like a minute or two, and it's going to be Sergio. And as you all know, um, there's a lot of stuff that went down, and the, the reason we had to cancel the show uh, initially or put it on hiatus was because of what happened with Sergio. And, you know, I, I didn't want to bring this back until I felt comfortable talking about it and bringing it up and putting it out there and letting it be, you know, something we can all, you know, I know people were saying, you know, a therapy session and stuff, and I don't know if we need to have that. Um, if that's what you feel like we need to have, that's cool. And you can, you know, feel free to call in, you know, the numbers in the, in the post. Um, Sergio's a really good friend of mine and he was very good to me in every way that he could be. Every time I ever asked him to do anything on mania or cage side, he always did it, and he never complained, and he was always right there when I needed him, um, except for, obviously, the last time um, when all the bad shit happened. And there's only so much I'm going to say about that. I'm, I'm, I don't want to really get too far into that. I think everybody knows how I feel about those things, and it caused some 
you know, issues uh, between me and him that, I mean, I, I think we've since cleared up. And like I said, I wanted to give him a chance to call in to the show and get to say whatever he wants to say to you guys because I know he misses you guys. And I know um, I know he misses writing for the site and he misses doing the show and I miss having him. And it's been really fucking hard to to just sort of go forward. I, it, it took me a couple weeks to even feel normal bringing cage side seats up in my browser. And it's a site that I run. And, uh, and Roth too, you're, you're a good friend of Sergio's too. I mean, that, that's where the infamous China picture came from that we made fun of him for, for so long. Yeah. I mean, when he, it, it, it was, it, it, it was tough for everybody. And, um, like I, I've known Sergio off the site. Like I've met him and I've hung out with him a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, quite a few times. So like, I wasn't part of the site when, by the time I, you know, I came back, he was, you know, it, it, I didn't really have a lot of time to hang out on Kate's side seats and hang out with, with Sergio. So I, I'm stoked to talk to him too, guys. Sergio, are you with us? I am here. What's up, man? Uh, not much. Just got off of work. Got to um, pick up my daughter. Right. It's, it's good to hear your voice, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I mean, how um, are you, how are you doing? Um, well, I, uh, first I want to, uh, take this opportunity to uh, to congratulate you guys on the new show. I know, or I just should say the the revamped show. I know it's gonna uh, be a success. Anything anything that Roth touches turns to gold. So I mean, come on, right. how could it not be? <laughs> um, secondly, I'd like to uh, use this opportunity to publicly uh, thank uh, FB Nation, uh, Kid Nate. Uh, Tom from, and Jesse from uh, from Mania, and especially you, Gino, for the opportunity, like uh, the opportunities that you afforded me um, while I was with SB Nation. Uh, also, to apologize for the situation that uh, they were put in, that all you guys were put in, you know, you guys personally and and the company as a whole that you guys were put in. Um, and uh, to all my beautiful cage side babies, to miss you. I uh, taking everything one day at a time, and uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, right now I'm just trying to take care of the things that need to get taken care of. Yeah, we we know you can't really talk about uh, the particulars, and I I don't I'm not sure anybody even really wants to get too far into detail on stuff, but uh, you know it's definitely good to hear from you again, and uh, you know it's nice to get the chance to be able to do something like this. And we want to make sure to thank fight fans radio for helping get this up off the ground, because every time I ever tried to run the podcast without Sergio, it was a uh, disaster from a production standpoint. It was abysmal. So they're uh, allowing us to get this out. So we appreciate that. And we appreciate you calling in, man. And we, I really hope you're doing okay. I mean, I'm, I'm doing as well as can be expected. Right. I suppose. All right, you guys, start, start talking about uh, men fake fighting in their boots and panties. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we appreciate it. Take care. Have a good one, man. So <clears throat> that's that was Sergio. So I'm 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 glad we got to do that. Um, that's very that was a little more difficult than I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. This this kind of this kind of feels like, and obviously this is this is the the first show, but it's like that same feeling that you got when you you, you listened to like what was it, bite this, and Matt Hardy called in when Lita was on the show. Like it, that, it, it sucks right now. Like, but it's good to hear his voice and stuff. Yeah, he claimed later that that was a that was a lot of kayfabe, that he was just it was all a work, almost all of it was a work, and that none of it was for real. But that's bullshit because you could hear it. Yeah, he you can hear him that. when he's yelling at her. You know, like, how fucking dare you cheat on me with Adam Copeland? And he would never call him by his real name, even though no one, or by his stage name, even though no one knew his real name. Yeah. And I guess that's the point. He doesn't want to give him any press. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, well, this, well, well, this is awkward. This is like the, yeah, this is the way to start a fucking show like this. Like, you know, the new listeners from like, you know, 
the people who were already following fight fans and stuff, and they're like, yeah, I'll check it out. And we're like, like a fucking, you know, oh my god, what is this fucking bullshit? <laughs> this isn't wrestling. Who's Sergio? <laughs> We've never been to cage side seats. Like, yeah, like uh, what's cage side? Yeah, so so th- th- this has kind of been a weird week for uh, for WWE. I actually had to catch up on Raw with uh, with Hulu, which that's awesome, but the commercials suck on it. But like. Can we talk about how Raw this week was terrible? Raw was actually fucking awful. I want to talk about... We need to go back a little further, though, because we um, missed a little bit of our window because uh, fight fans, I guess, is that what I call Erica? Or should I call her Erica? Yeah, you, 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 that, that's her name. You, I can actually have... call her by name? Yeah, she's <laughs> name. She's telling me on IM, yes, you can call me by my name. Um <laughs> Uh, she had gone to Brazil, so we kind of missed our window of the time that we could have gotten out in front of and been able to actually speak uh, through audio about CM Punk and his <laughs> <laughs> fucking spinning back fist to a dude who's putting sunglasses on in a fucking arena at 1030 at night. Uh, and I can't where, where in Sacramento, California, punching a fan in the face. And it wasn't even the right fan. <laughs> it was like CM Punk hates people so much. Like he hates his fan. Like he hates fans. Like he's Dana <laughs> White. Like he despises everyone who likes him. Like, you know what I mean? Like you, you cheer me and you want to touch me and like get your fucking hands away from me. Don't approach me in public. Like, you know, I just want to live my life normally, even though I want to, I want all the spoils of being a famous person without people bugging me. Like, what the right, fuck like, do you think is going to happen, dude? <laughs> like, I want to totally be famous, but um, no autographs, no photos. Right, don't yeah. Think, don't, don't ever think about, like, tweeting at me. Like, <laughs> the guy's absurd. It's Obviously, nice. yeah, some, like, somebody did punch him in the gut. I think that was a story, but, like. The kidneys? <laughs> we, like, we fucking treated it like the fucking Zapruder film, dude. Like, like I, I had I had my graphic designer uh june my lady she's she's doing whole gallery posts where she's getting screenshots of like each second each frame even where it's like okay we're pretty sure this little fucking maggot right here sneaks up behind the big dude putting the glasses on and then smacks punk in his head and he's just like fuck this and fucking turns around with a big haymaker breaks dude's glasses and then turns around again and then like lunging punches him in the fucking head and the other dude is just backed up, pointing and laughing and shit. <laughs> like, you know that one guy's like, oh, man, thank God. Thank God, because that sucks so much. Like, and, then this, <laughs> and then the story of the, what's his name? I think, like, Dario Teus or some shit like that. Like, he sees us put up a post, and he's, like, in the picture, because I took a screenshot of the YouTube, because, you know, we got to get around. We can't use WWE pictures or whatever, but free use for them YouTubes, baby. What up? I took a screenshot and he just so happened to be standing right next to punk and it was on the front page in the cover and it stayed there all day. Well, he fucking acts like a complete Mark goes to Twitter, posts a link to the story and goes, look, I'm fucking famous. I'm on TV. I'm blah, blah, blah. And then this idiot starts taking credit for being the one who punched punk in the kidneys. And he's all like, yeah, I fucking punched him in the kidneys. And then he stole off on some other fucking idiot. That guy's about to get paid millions, and he don't even know that I'm the reason for it. Thank You're welcome. Like, you are the dumbest human being alive. Like, you <laughs> just set a new bar. Like, congratulations, you just set the bar for how dumb a human being can be. <laughs> so, wait, that's actually, his, like, that, that really happened? He actually saw the post you, on Kate's side seats. Yeah, dude. Like I looked at, cause I was like sleeping. And then, um, one of my editors was like gathering the troops. Like, Hey, there's a lot of updates to this story and it's going to get us a ton of hits. Let's actually cover the story. Cause there's so much going on. And Keith, Keith Harris, one of our writers who does awesome work, he realized, or I don't know how he found it, but this dude was on Twitter and he, li- he linked to our post and then started talking a bunch of crazy shit after the post. I'm like, oh yeah, fuck you CM Punk, you little bitch. I'll take you one-on-one. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, dude? No, you won't. You, you'll touch him and then run away real quick and get out of the blast zone when he starts fucking laying people out. That's also the most redneck thing. Like, here, here, here's the problem. Like, I, I love pro wrestling and, and I, I say that proudly. It took a while to actually admit that out loud. But I love watching pro wrestling. Oh, they yeah. have a they have a very um, 
stereotypical fan base yes. that are like <laughs> that are rednecks. Like they wear they they, they wear uh, Tasmanian devil sweatshirts with like dream catchers on them. Like <laughs> they, they, like they, they have a very very uh, definitive and recognizable fan base. And like that's something that their WWE fans would do. Like that's the WWE ver- universe. They're gonna punch What's... wrestlers in the in the back. And then go on Twitter and talk about how much of a pussy they were. Like, what's fun- <laughs> right? Like, what's funny though is the guy that Punk ended up hitting looked like that. Like, he looked like a stereotypical WWE fan. And like, I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not like everyone has different. Like, not every NFL fan is like a great looking person. Like fucking Hollywood. Like, he just looked like a normal person. But the dude that was, like, talking all that shit, this Dario guy, he's, like, in his picture on Twitter, he's, like, got his hat cocked and he's got his arm around two chicks. And he's trying to, like, pimp it up and shit, act like he's a big player. Yeah, I I punched that motherfucker in his head. I I punched him in his kidneys. What up, bitch? Come at me. I'll take you on any time. Like, no, you won't. You had the chance. You could have fucking, you could have been really famous. You were standing right next to him. He's clutching his title with both hands. You could have just cracked him in the jaw. And CM Man. Punk goes down. Or he could have been super rich. Like, or he could have been the dude that's like super rich right now. You that's know? true. <laughs> like, this was in Cali. Like, <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Like, you're in Sacramento, California, which is apparently a shithole. Like, and, and California is one of the most litigious states. Like, you totally could have made some money, but instead you're going to let, like, that, oh, man. It's so stupid. <laughs> And the guy that got hit was like, okay, I'm not going to file a police report. And I'm, you know, I don't want, I'm not going to press charges, whatever. He broke my glasses. That sucks. I can understand whatever. And then like later, hours later, after I presume lawyers got a hold of him or his parents, his family, whatever. And they're like, dude, you realize what the fuck just happened to you? You just got punched in the face when you didn't do anything wrong on live television by a company owned by Vince fucking McMahon. Like we could get paid and he came back and here was his new story i have knee pain dog you got punched in the face yeah (laughs) like dude you got backhanded and then he pushed you he like lunged toward you and barely connected with your face the second time what the fuck does that have to do with your knee and then people in the threads on cage side are like oh because you know you don't know maybe you twisted maybe you fell down and twisted it on the way down no 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 (laughs) That, um, man, that, that man is looking to get money now, and he, and he has, like, and he lost everything that he could cl- actually claim, such as, like, why not say, like, I have a hurt jaw? Like, my jaw is now clicking. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Like, TMJ. Like, I didn't have this shit before a big-ass wrestler blasted me. Right. <clears throat> but, but, like, no. yeah, I, and then the cops, like, straight up told him, like, dude, you said you didn't want to press charges. We don't see anything criminally wrong. And don't they fucking, like... Isn't that a part of your ticket? Yeah, it says don't touch the wrestlers or the performers. Yeah, like you may become a part of the show if they go yeah. out. Like, like it's also the same reason why, like, remember when, what was it, the uh, the NWO, when they invaded and, like, a, a fan, like, tried jumping the rail and interrupting that promo with, like, Hogan, uh, Hall, and Nash. And you see what happened to that fucking guy. <laughs> yeah, like, like, that guy got his ass kicked. And that like, guy Nash did- is kicking <laughs> him in the head. And that dude didn't get paid. Like he got, holding onto he got, the ropes for leverage. <laughs> he got shit kicked and then arrested. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like he didn't even get famous because his face didn't even show up. Like he didn't even get all the way into the ring. He got kind of halfway in, but he was still laying there, so you could barely see him. You could just see then, Nash and Hall's big ass like kicking the shit out of his head. Like, and then they took him to jail. It says on your ticket, like, you know, you can't, like, you can't touch the wrestlers. Like, yeah, I'm sure that they're not going to punch you in the face if you pat them on the back. I'm hoping, like, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, Ryback looks like he's about to explode on somebody just by being on so many uh, al- apparent uh, PEDs. Of me co- <laughs> like, I'm co- covering my ass right now. But yeah. it looks like he's on so many steroids or horse meats. That um that he's willing like he may explode on a fan and actually rip someone's head off. <laughs> yeah, like thank God, like it, it happens all the time. Like there's there's rarely an instance where the wrestler doesn't kick the shit out of him. Like I can remember Eddie Guerrero versus Rob Van Dam on I think it might have been Raw. A guy got in. It was a ladder match, and Guerrero's like halfway up, and he pushes the ladder. <laughs> what? 
Guerrero falls and gets up and like goes running after this guy, like trying to throw punches while the ref in the ring is already throwing punches at the fucking fan, dude. And Van Dam's just laying there like, God, what the fuck? Like, Van Dam's from They were throw ring, throw chairs into the fucking ring and shit. Yeah, I mean, like, it, yeah, it happens. In, like, it happened in ECW, like they, when fans threw like the chairs in the ring. It doesn't happen in WWE, like that's a family show you're not allowed to assault the wrestlers that's a really bit like that's also common sense like don't be fucking retarded like that's and that's what i was saying too and i did when i did a story on it like i can remember watching in like the fucking the 90s and there were very few wrestlers that would use the crowd they would come in through the crowd like uh ddp did it for a while edge did it when he first came around and i can remember sting doing it and i was a big mark for sting I can remember like dreaming how cool would it be to be in the crowd and sting trench coat, face paint, complete badass. He was just the coolest motherfucker there was. What if he walked by me? Like my first inclination wouldn't be to push him. No, and, like it wouldn't be to punch him in the fucking head or, or the kidneys. Like, Oh, Hey guys, check this out. I'm going to fucking punch him in the head. It's going to be so cool. Like, why would you do that? Like, I don't even get it. I would just, like, look at him and stare and be like, holy fucking shit, that's Sting, and he's right next to me. Right, and then you're going to, like, run up and, like, pat him on his shoulder just so you could like, tell your friends at, at high school or, like, middle school or however, however old you were. You'd be like, dude, you have no idea what I did last night. I patted Sting on the back while he was walking through the crowd, and all your dude friends would be like, no shit, man, that's the fucking coolest. That, like, that, that's the coolest thing in the world. Like, you wouldn't be like, oh, man, guess what I did last night? I punched Sting in the kidneys. Yeah. And, like, Punk's thing, and it made it, it made a lot more sense where Punk was coming from because he said, and we couldn't hear what was happening. We could only see. And in a fucking crowd like that, the mentality, if you're the guy who everyone's trying to touch, I mean, that's kind of scary already because if enough people turn the tide, I mean, the mob mentality is going to take over and you're in a really dangerous situation. Yeah, I mean, it, but it happened. It happened in pro sports too. What was that kid from uh, the Chicago uh, Cubs? Oh, man. Yeah, like that yeah. dude. That dude got like death threats. Like, yeah, <laughs> you, it's, it's terrifying, and I'm pretty it's sure that there, like you're all alone, dude. Like there's a million people around you, but you're by yourself because at any moment these fucking psychos who take this shit way too seriously, and I'm one of them. If you follow me on Twitter during Bear Games, I'm one of these people, but. Like that, you, people get fucking crazy. And here's Punk saying, "I heard somebody say, let's kick him down the stairs." Oh man, fuck that! And at that point, he's like, "I'm fucking. Someone's getting fucking swung on. The next time I get touched, I'm fucking punching someone to let them know you don't fucking touch me." And then it just so happened the sneaky little bastard came around and tapped him on the head, and it was just enough so the dude right in front of him kind of bumped into Punk a little bit, and he thought that that was the guy who hit him. So he turns around and just fucking nails him. That's like, I get it. I mean, I can get, I understand. And we had so much debate. Like, is it right or is it wrong? So where do you come in? It wasn't okay for CM Punk to punch that dude in the face because he felt threatened by him in a crowd. Totally. Totally. 100%. Really? Like, what, yeah, dude. Like I, I go to ACW shows in Austin, like shout out to ACW. That's the, like, it's a really, really good indie show. And like fans are the same way, man. Like if you, you're part of the show. Like if 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 I went and, and punched ACH in the head, I'm pretty sure I'd get the shit kicked out of me. And not <laughs> just not just by every like all the wrestlers, but by everyone that attended the show, and that's terrifying to me. Like, <laughs> see, and I I don't agree with like I my my fucking op ed on it. I guess was to say I can understand why he did it. I really can, but it doesn't make it okay. Because dude, if you're in a situation like that and you've been pushed, and you've been punched more than a few times, and he kept turning around to see who was doing it, walk away. Get out of that situation. And people are like, well, it's part of the show. He can't just walk away. I'm like, it's safety first, motherfucker. Like, you think Vince McMahon's going to get really upset? Because he's like, well, why'd you walk away from the spot when the cameras are on you, and you're doing all this stuff, and you walked away? How, how are you going to do that? That's not a part of the show. He's like, well, because I'm getting fucking punched in the kidneys, Vince. And they're talking about kicking me down the stairs. I'm not and, just Vince McMahon, and then Vince McMahon will go like, yeah, totally, man. Like, great well, idea. Back, uh, you know, like I read on The Observer, back in the territorial days, they used to, you know, they, the heels would get stabbed. That's how you know you're doing your job. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> that. Because they're fucking stabbing you with little shivs and shit. 
it's like it's pro wrestling dude what do you do? like you're if you come into contact with a fan and you're a good enough heel they're gonna try to murder you like, that sounds so ridiculous man like, like, terry, like terry funk would say it's a badge of honor like i want to go get the fucking knife for, to be a souvenir because that's how i know i did my job like you're a fucking a, psycho that's a badge of stupidity like, yeah like that's not pro wrestling that's <laughs> that's insanity that's a riot <laughs> like at that point you know you know like I would be like, hey, you know what? Not working this crowd. Like, I'm not, I'm not working this town. And these yeah, guys, like, last time I was here, they, they, they tried killing me. Yeah, like, I'm not going, like, I'll go through the crowd, but not into this, like, crowded of a space, this small space. And there's no security anywhere. Like, they were nowhere to be found. It wasn't until Punk hit the other guy that one security guard went running up. Like, what are you going to do? Like, you're one guy. And if CM Punk is getting fucking punched and knocked around, what are you going to do? nothing nothing you're gonna get your ass kicked. <laughs> yeah nothing if they decide to overrun you you're gonna get overrun too and <laughs> right. i i heard that vince was like really fucking pissed like went backstage to the gorilla and was like god damn it what the hell is he thinking <laughs> then there was like like do you really do you think that this is gonna cause them to to kill off uh punk's championship run then like never. It, it, like never like, there, there's gonna be nothing that punk has to do he wrote it he wrote he wrote and I, I say that you can't see but i'm doing air quotes like he wrote an apology and that was like that's all he had to do that's all he had to do and really this was like the best time for him to do something really dumb like this because john cena's hurt and he can't he's so hurt he can't wrestle hell in a cell he's hurt enough that wwe actually fucking booked ryback and so the bad. main event of a pay-per-view in the year 2012. It's so bad. Like that. One, because, like, <laughs> Ryback sucks. Like, here's the other <laughs> thing. Like, Ryback is terrible. Like, how did this guy, one, get, I get how he got on the roster because he, he he's, a, you know, a very muscular guy who doesn't look naturally muscular. Saying that very calmly. Um, <laughs> so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But, like, how's this guy going to work a match with Punk? Really? Like, you're asking CM Punk to carry this match. And it has to be a great one because, like, it's the headliner. Like, there, there, is anybody really caring about fucking Sheamus? It's going to be all on Punk. And somehow you have to ask him to have a, a match with a guy who has four moves. Like, legitimate four moves, not like the four moves of Doom. He has four moves. There is and, a and one's a lariat. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's impressive if the right guy is getting hit by it and whatever. And he looks worse anyway because he couldn't look because Tensai sandbagged him on Raw a few weeks ago and wouldn't let him lift him up over his head to do his finisher. And so he he kind of looks like shit right now anyway. But there's it's it's fucking Vince being in love with somebody who has a body like Ryback has and achieved it through whatever means necessary. And I'm not gonna say much more than that on that. We know what I'm saying here. Because that's what Vince did. And Vince loves the guy, thinks he's awesome. There's been talk of having him stay undefeated until WrestleMania and wrestle Undertaker at WrestleMania. Who's going to fucking buy that match? Streak versus streak at next no, year. Well, they're going to buy it for Roxena, but that's what they're going to have on the undercard is Ryback Undertaker. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Dude, he has four moves. There like is a, there's a very documented history, and it's not a good one on what happens when very limited, big, big limited wrestlers attempt to expand their uh, move set. Like Sid Vicious. They wanted him to come off the to uh, the middle rope, the top rope in a match. He did it against Steiner, and he broke his leg in half. Yep. Like Bill Goldberg, who we've been comparing Ryback to Goldberg because, I mean, he did the uh, WWE Magazine interview where he's like, I'm way better than he ever was. I'm more of an athlete, which is bullshit. Bill Goldberg played pro football. Come on, dude. <laughs> like, Bill, Bill Goldberg was, was probably the most athletic person ever in pro wrestling like i mean it's as far as it's, pedigree goes as far, yeah it's not it's not like, even close maybe the only arguable person is kurt angle like and then before that you'd have to go back to like f fucking like no, the brock, awa in the 70s and 60s I, like brock beats them both though maybe brock's a super freak man that that dude is a crazy athlete but just comparing goldberg and ryback is like come on dude 
Like you can barely, he can barely move because of how big his fucking muscles are. Like at least Goldberg looked realistic. Like somebody could actually achieve a body like that just by eating right and lifting weights every now and again. Like he didn't look ridiculously insane. Like he's going to pop if you hit him with a needle. I mean, here's the thing. First question is, is Mason Ryan still alive? He's hurt. So, so we don't know if he's still alive. He, 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 <laughs> he could have died. Yeah. He could have took another cup of steroids and died. Yeah. That sucks. The second thing is like, I would be way more impressed with Ryback and like, obviously look, I, I hate, I hate big wrestlers that wrestle like big wrestlers. I would be so impressed if the guy started doing like Rob Van Dam moves. Like if he did a van, like a van Terminator, I would love Ryback. Like if he jumped, if he did a, a a five like a a frog splash, I'd love that. That would be incredible. Like <laughs> don't like I'm not impressed by a guy who is like his like his lariat isn't even as cool as as Layfield's man. Like, it's, it's it's good, but it's not yeah, it's not as good as JBL. JBL is the best, man. And then, like is it, it does the guy can he cut a promo? He doesn't say anything. Like that's his whole thing. Like, but Goldberg didn't either. You don't need to cut a promo to to get over. I mean, obviously, at some point you have to grow as a wrestler, or else you'll bomb. Which obviously that's what happened with Goldberg. But I just he doesn't like you said. He's, you can't live on those four moves forever. And Goldberg tried to expand, and he starts doing spinning kicks and shit, and he ended Bret Hart's career, and like nearly got the guy killed. So. I mean, I'm just, I'm not, com- I'm not even comfortable with Ryback versus Punk because I don't know, like, how are they going to, and the, it presents not just a problem as far as how the hell do you set up the match? Like, what's, what's Punk going to do with this guy? Like, CM Punk's very good at what he does. He's a great wrestler, but he's not good enough to have a great match with Ryback. It just ain't going to happen. If I, Dolph Ziggler can't get a good match out of him and all he's doing is bumping, sorry, Punk's got no chance. Yeah, like, the, the, like, can you imagine, like, Daniel Bryan trying to work with Ryback? I love Daniel Bryan, and there's no way that that would work. I just don't. I mean, maybe they'll surprise me, and maybe maybe Ryback's got more than I can think of. Maybe but... he has a moonsault. Maybe he has a moonsault, man. That would be incredible. No, That'd be, oh, man. But, it, you know, it's in hell in a cell and shit. And, like, can you, what are they going to do for 20 minutes? And there has to be a run-in, because he can't win the belt. Punk's not losing the title. But Ryback has to keep his undefeated streak alive because that's the sole reason he's over. And if they want to keep that going, they're not going to beat him clean here, even if it's Punk. So how are they going to get the DQ on him? Somebody's yeah. got to do a run. But like, can, can you even get a DQ in a Hell in a Cell match? I think so. I don't know. Like, and and here's the other thing: like, it, it he could he could get defeated, and then he could still say like, "Feed me more," and like his character can start eating. Like, <laughs> <laughs> feed me punk. Like, I'm hoping Brock comes back and, like, rips the fucking cage door off. And then Punk just escapes with Heyman. And then Ryback and Goldberg start fighting. And then the pay per view ends. That'd be so, where sweet. they can go, well, he didn't lose. Punk didn't win, but he didn't lose his title. And Ryback never really lost. And, you know, that means Lesnar and Punk are aligned in some way. I could dig something like that. I will not be happy if anybody gets pinned in this match. Yeah, also, we, we got Chris Hines in the comments. He's saying the funny thing is people act like Ryback is some green-ass rookie. He's been wrestling since 2004. Yo, that doesn't change the fact that that guy sucks shit. Like, he's, he wrestles like a green-ass rookie. Like, you know his movement <laughs> is from Tough Enough? Is it really? That's where, like, I guess that's like legitimately how he is. Like, I was watching, you know how it is. You get on YouTube and you start watching old pro wrestling shit. You just end up, like, going way down yep. and watching. You end up on some crazy obscure shit. Well, his real name is Ryan Reeves. And I was watching a YouTube clip of him on Tough Enough, and Al Snow's making fun of him because, like, at one point, I guess, literally, it, maybe it was Taz or it was, like, Bill DeMott or some shit. Like, he got punched in the face because they were like, you need to stop eating because all you do is eat. Like, that's all he ever does. Like, he constantly eats and eats and eats. Every time you see him, he's eating something. Like, to the point where they're like, I'm going to punch you in the face if you eat that. And he ate it, and he got punched in the face, and he ran away so we could keep eating. That's his <laughs> so whole gimmick. So, so he's chicken shit, too. <laughs> On Tough Enough, yeah, I guess. But, like, that's – that, and it's oh four. Well, that might have been oh four oh five. I guess. That could have been even sooner. But it's like a decade later, and he's working the same fucking gimmick. 
here here's one thing which, which kind of bothered me obviously hell in hell in a cell is like this one it's a match but also a pay-per-view like they always like in the hype up to uh to take her triple h at this past Ruff- wrestlemania like they make it seem like it's like the worst like most, most people match like uh, elimination chamber sucks even more man like this is really you're just doing bumps in a ring surrounded like far away from a cage yeah, at this point, it used to be really good. I mean, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker, the first Hell in a Cell, was, that was a five-star match. Yeah, so, so it was Mankind and, uh, and Undertaker. Yeah. But like now it's just literally, it's like an enclosed street fight. They're so scared to let the guys, they, first of all, they can't get color. They can't blade. They can't bleed in any way. They're not supposed to. You know, other than like when Kofi Kingston doesn't understand how to hold back on his fucking Trouble in Paradise and he ends up almost murdering, killing the Miz. Murdering the Miz. And murdering. they actually get, like, if you're watching main event right now and listening to us, you probably already watched Kofi win the title the next night. Like, he, he kills Miz. And someone said it's not a botch. They told me, they called me out for calling it a botch. That is absolutely a botch. Because That's the point of pro wrestling, the point of pro wrestling isn't to actually kick the guy in the head. It's to protect him while making it look like you're kicking him in the head. Right. And, like, Miz has got a huge gash on his forehead and shit. They're like, no, that's just stiff. That's not a botch. Bullshit, it's a botch. Like, Stone Cold Steve Austin worked stiff. Yes. Terry Funk worked stiff. Kicking somebody in the face on a jumping roundhouse, like, Jaguar kick? Not a stiff. Like, that's not stiff. That That's kicking somebody in the face because you fucked up really bad. It's intention. It's the intent. Like... I, you wouldn't call like mankind setting up thumbtacks and then taking a back bump on them. That's not a botch because it's intended that way. For it's anything. actually shoot. It's legit, but it's not a botch because that's what they intended. But if you fucking set up the back or the thumbtacks and you were going to take a back bump next to them and just tease it and never actually go through with it, but you end up on them, then it's a botch, right? We call it complete botch. And like, that's- Talk, talk, talking about botches, like Sin Cara, like it's as bad as Sin Cara's botches. Like both Sin Cara's, both of them. That dude is the worst. Both of them. <laughs> and Mysterio's got an illness now, which I, you know, who knows what the fuck that is. He's, he got taken off for people who care about such things. He got taken off a tour of Egypt lately. And, and yeah, he's got quote unquote an illness. There's a, a lot of rumors circulating on that. I don't want to. I don't know if they're true or not. John Fisher says, "I agree. Yeah, I don't think it was planned for Kofi to destroy Miz's face. Of course, it wasn't planned." Can you mention it actually was planned though? Like, yeah, like here's the thing, Miz. We're gonna get you. We're gonna basically give you a concussion. Like, <laughs> he's, but, but, but it's gonna be really. You're not actually going to get a concussion, but you're gonna get super close to it. Yeah. And that's what they said. And they actually, with all the concussion issues going on right now and all the, like, controversy surrounding all that shit, especially with WWE, like, they would intentionally do an angle like that. Like, that's insane. No one, like, they would never do that. And the crazy, like, the craziest thing is, like, everybody is talking about concussion safety. Like, he- like head trauma and concussions, like, now. Everyone's worried about it. The NFL is worried about it. Hockey is worried about it. I'm pretty sure the NBA is kind of worried about it. Like and there's no and under no circumstances is somebody like yeah totally let's let's concuss him like let's concuss the Miz yeah Ooh. and then run a story about it on the website you mean, know what I mean meanwhile the crazy ass thing is did you see the, uh, the 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 hit on Robert Griffin like two weeks ago or last week where he was legitimately like concussed and like the way that football writers are are talking about it is like. Oh, it's only a mild concussion. He'll be back. Mild concussion. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as a mild concussion. You got concussed. Like, yeah, Shanahan. Like, yeah, it's just a mild concussion. Like, dude, stop fucking saying that. Like, no, you like that doesn't exist. <laughs> it's, it's you got concussed or you didn't, and if you did, you have to like sit out and not get concussed again the next week. <laughs> like, it's, it's 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 like your heart is open and you get cut on it and they go, well, it's a mild cut on the heart. Like that, that it's your fucking heart. There's no such thing as a mild cut of the heart. You're fucking dead either which way. It was like, a mild. It was a mild stabbing. No, it was, it was just a stabbing. <laughs> it was a mild stab wound of the heart. Like get the fuck out of here. Oh, that's that's good. Um. 
Uh, Royal B brings up a good point for saying we're saying they wouldn't actually exploit the uh, concussion stuff, but yes, they would because of Eddie exploitation, which obviously you got, you, you got to talk about that because th- when the Eddie De Guerrero and the, and the the Chris Benoit stuff like went down, I, I was the MMA fan who was basically fuck fuck pro wrestling. This is so much better, and then I kind of came back to pro wrestling when I started watching like old clips on YouTube. And I was like, this is actually still pretty rad. Yeah. There's a lot to like about it. Other than like, fuck man, we don't even like need to get too much into the, you know, how can I be? Cause I, it happens on mania a lot. Cause you know, Jesse will post if, if there's a Lesnar story, it'll be, Oh shit, we can get good hits. Let's post it. And then people are like, Oh man, you, isn't there somewhere else you can post this shit? I'm not a fucking three year old little baby with no brain yet. I actually have a brain. I can't watch pro wrestling. You know, it's you fucking adults that watch it might as well be in diapers. It's like you're a fucking idiot. You're a moron. It's like so we, much fun. It's so they, much fun. It's a really shitty movie that's been playing out for like close to three decades, right? Like two decades, right? A that's, long time. Well, pro wrestling's been around forever. No, I mean Monday Night Raw. Oh, yeah. Raw started in 93. Okay, so, so two, for two decades, you've been seeing a really shitty movie play out live every single week. And, and it would like, be different if we didn't know it was shitty. Right. Like, like, that's the thing. When you're younger, it's awesome. When you're older, you're just like, whoa, that was really rad. And I'm st- like, I, I still get like awestruck whenever, like I kind of mentioned it before, like ACH, if you've, if you've never followed indie wrestling, you got to figure out who this guy is. Cause like the stuff that he does, absolutely spectacular. And I've gone to events with, you know, with, with friends and went with Sergio twice or three times. And like the stuff that he does in the ring is incredible. And I'm 27 and it still blows my mind that he, that people are able to do this and watching some really stiff like finishers. I still get blown away by it. I'm 27. Obviously I know it's fake, but it still can be fun to watch. Yeah. It, I mean, they tell good stories. We, I, me and uh, me and Sergio talked about on one of the podcasts, the story that, the reason Triple H and Undertaker match was so good at WrestleMania this year was because of the story they told. Yep. It was a really, like, I had a house full of people, and we're all adults, all MMA fans, <clears throat> excuse me, all, you know, people who we used to order all the, you know, a UFC event would come on, we'd get a bunch of people up here and we'd watch. We don't do that anymore because the UFC fucking sucks anymore. But, and we're sitting there, like, and we're marking out going crazy when the spot where Sean hits the, Sean Michaels hits the sweet chin music, Taker turns around, Triple H hits the pedigree, and he rolls him over, and Sean starts to count, and we're sitting here going crazy, like, oh, my fucking God, they're going to beat him. Like, they're actually going to let this egomaniacal fuck Triple H beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And then he kicks out, and we're all like, oh, my God, this is the greatest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. And we're like, I, I'm, you know. I freaked out when that happened. Like, I freaked out throughout wrestlemania this year i literally it's on netflix right now like uh, i I've, i watched the the taker triple h match i actually have uh I, I downloaded uh wrestlemania to have on my hard drive so i can travel with it i actually still have it on my dvr like i jumped up at my out of my seat so many times during wrestlemania it, it's it's still the, the the biggest spectacle in the world man yeah it's great and mania is the one night on twitter everyone will put aside their bullshit and stop acting like they're not paying attention and live tweeting it the whole fucking show, the whole show. And like, and especially and, that match, but they were, they were live tweeting Seamus fucking Daniel Bryan. And that's how, you know, like quit. You need to stop talking shit in the future. Motherfucker. Like you're caught now. Don't mind me. I can't believe they beat Brian in 18 seconds. I like, go oh, get the fuck out of here. But you also get to find out on WrestleMania, like, all the all the MMA sites that's like when I did my my on uh, on Bloody Elbow I did something like the eight days of Brock Lesnar where all I did was just cover his pro wrestling career and like my favorite matches or moments where like I did like a like a, a video of him f fiving the shark and all that shit like yeah every, like, like I'm an like I'm, I'm a wrestling fan you knew that but like other MMA sites they'll actually have like wrestlemania coverage and you're what like you guys hate pro wrestling you've you've always spit in the face of it and like it would be like luke thomas going in and start like talking about pro wrestling even though he hates it like it's it blows my mind 
Yeah, like that's kind of the, you know, I, I like Luke and I think you like Luke. But yeah, I mean, like if you're going to have a conversation and he jumps in and the conversation is about pro wrestling, I mean, the conversation might as well stop yeah, because like, you'd like you're not really qualified to talk about it. And and you know that if if WrestleMania is huge this year, can you imagine that, like MMA fighting running, uh, you know, WrestleMania coverage? That's basically what MMA does. Like you'll see it all over the place. And it's so frustrating. I'm pretty sure for you, Gino, like seeing all these MMA sites, like just cherry pick the stories like that they'll never otherwise really care about. The Lawler thing bugged me. And I took a lot of, I took a lot of heat for that when I actually said, fuck you to the people who were covering it because they were getting hits on it. And then people like attacked me. Be like, Oh man, you know, of course. So Gino's going to make it about him. And I'm like, how am I making it about me? Like, and, and I did say I cover this because I love this. And then, you know, like I'm not getting paid a bunch of money to do this. Like this is something I just really like. And now like a tragedy's happened and you motherfuckers are all of a sudden like leeching on it. Like I don't, I didn't want this to happen. And I think we talked that and I like, this is crazy. And this really sucks. And what sucks even more is that there's a bunch of assholes out there profiting on it now. And, like, people were coming after me about it. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, it's not about me. It's about people being douchebags. Right. Exactly. And then, like, somebody finally put out the email of the guy saying, hey, we need an op-ed at this point in the morning about why WWE was wrong to keep going with the show after the Lawler heart attack. And, you know, we'll, we'll negotiate pay, blah, blah, but we need it by this time. Are you up for it? And they're like, this is how the news works, guys. And then I'm like, that's what the hell I'm talking about. And everybody's like, oh, well, I guess that is kind of bad. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's like that thing. You say something on Twitter and everyone takes it personally immediately. Everyone who follows you, they're like, he must be talking about me. Yeah, exactly. It's oh, it's it's oh, it, with MMA writers and everybody. It's always so super, sensitive. So, so thin skinned. So it's, thin skinned. Man. MMA, like, they don't even know, like, the conference call today and all the shit that's been going on. Um, the UFC might as well be WWE UFC okay. tonight. is going to turn into Monday night raw where Rashad Evans shows up on UFC tonight. And he's like, I want my title shot. I want to fight Anderson Silva at middleweight. And then Chris Weedman comes out and he's like, no, I want the shot. And Dana White comes out and goes, you two are going to fight. Whoever wins gets Anderson and Anderson comes up with the belt and goes, I'll kick both your asses. And then like the, Announcers like, bro, it's crazy. Yeah, the announcer's like, it's crazy. The booking's nuts. UFC 159, we'll see you there. Like, that's what UFC tonight's about to become. And they hate it, but they they act like it's not WWE. That's, fuck, that's Raw. You are basically watching Raw when you watch that shit. Yeah, and also, uh, Dakota points out today um, on the call, I... Uh, I was going to ask Dana about um, what, what's going on with Forrest Griffin and Brett Okamoto from, uh, from ESPN. He got on first. And so he found out what happened. Once you're in the queue, apparently I'm the only one who doesn't know how to get uncued. So like, <laughs> what did you do? So like, I go like Matthew Roth from Bleacher Report. And I go, uh, the, the one, I don't respond like the first time. And like what the first time they call on me and then they're like, Matthew, are you there? You have to unhold. And I'm like, uh, 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 Dana, Dana. So, um, there's been a lot of criticism about this booking. Do you feel like, what do you say to the fans that feel that Chael Sonnen talked his way into it? And like, gee, like, fuck, it was like the ninth time he was asked that, but I, I can't not ask you just fuck man. It was the worst. <laughs> You get caught in this spot like that. Like, yeah, every time I get on this calls, I never cue myself up for a question because I don't want to be in that position because, you know, they're always going to call on someone before you. They're going to put Ariel up there. They're going to put all these other guys, Ioli and shit. And then it's going to get to you and you're like, fuck, they already asked my question. Like, what am I supposed to say now? And it was like, and there was only one. That was the only question I cared about. Like, uh, like, we all know what happened with with Puff, and I, yeah, obviously there's a pro wrestling show, so we'll go back to pro wrestling. Like we already knew what happened and why it was booked, and I only had that one question prepared. So, <laughs> so this is really about your complete lack of preparation to actually ask more than one question. Completely, and it's my my complete lack of professionalism. Like, like, 
like like Meltzer gets on there and like he'll ask like four questions at a time. <laughs> Roth gets on there, he's got one, and if it's already gone, it's like, oh fuck, dude. Like, um, hi, Dana. So like, what are you wearing today, Dana? Like, you got a suit on or? <laughs> Just called ask Dana. Like, hey, Dana, what do you think you could? What would you rather fight? Uh, a horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Like I might have just asked that. Like the most like asinine question. Like, like you should ask him if he's like, would you actually fight Roy Nelson? Because he yeah. wants to fight you now. So like, fuck Jones and Senna. We all know that's a fraud. Who gives a fuck about these guys? <laughs> Dana versus Roy. Let's fucking see it happen. You would have fought Tito. I mean, you know, you'd be recovering from the Meniere's disease or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, like. <laughs> Or I just said, like, hey, Dana, um, remember that time that you challenged all the MMA media about what one show that broke out on Spike? Yeah, it was, like, Afro Samurai, and I would like my check for two grand. Like, am I supposed to do that? It's so fucking bad. So, So, yeah, back to wrestling, man. I'm sorry. um, So, yeah, we're going to be doing the show for about an hour. I mean, I know we used to do the old podcast for hours at a time, and some people have – they're not huge fans that we're not doing it after Monday Night Raw. The reason for that is um, I'm not sure Erica and the gang would be up to staying up so damn late. And I'm not sure I'd be willing to talk about Raw right after because it's three hours of there's, shit usually. There's so much filler, man. It's so bad. Like since it's switched, they've had one good show. The only time they had one the good show, well, okay, not including Raw 1000, which was three hours. That was a fucking awesome show. Um, the show they did in the panic to get the ratings back up. When Vince came back and had the match with Punk, where Punk punched the guy in the face. That was a really good show. Every other show sucked. This past week was so fucking bad. I mean, I mean how about what, like when Triple H retired, I guess? Like, remember, like he had like 15 minutes to walk that he walked the aisle. Yeah. 15 minutes. Like, oh man, I cut a big promo on it. People were getting on me about that too. I, my raw reactions post. I was like, man, fuck you, dude. Like you want so bad for us to like, think of you as one of the greatest ever. And you're just not right. Like he's just not. Oh, and I got to bring up the tournament. Get in there and vote guys. We don't have nearly as many votes for this, this, the greatest matches tournament. And I'm I can't figure out why. And people are like, well, don't make it go away. I'm not going to make it go away. Cause it does get hits and all that good stuff. But I just can't figure out why we're not getting as many votes as we were before. Cause with the new site, it gets to stay in the cover on the top the whole day. Get in there and vote people. I mean, we need- I, 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 didn't, I haven't voted yet. And I think part of it is I haven't seen a lot of these matches and I, I think just that- don't, I don't have the time to, to really watch them all, even though you do post the video in every single post. Yes. Nolan says, thanks for acknowledging how hard my job is. Gino. Nolan's our live blog guy. Um, he's a guy I hired because I was sick and tired of doing all the live blogs myself. <laughs> live blogging sucks, by the way. It is the, the fucking bleacher. worst. <laughs> I'm the bleacher report live blog guy. And Are you really? Like, yeah, I, I live blog conference calls. I live blog uh, pay-per-view FX shows. I used to do Bellator, and then finally I was like, I'm not doing Bellator anymore, guys. I'm sorry. (laughs) The 18 hits isn't worth it. (laughs) Like, (laughs) I think it was the same thing with, like, Bloody Elbow, when I had to do, like, play-by-play for everything from on HDNet, and then, like, finally I just started putting up a post and being like, "Uh, I'm not doing this, guys. I don't really care. Here's an open thread. (laughs) Like, here's an open thread. Have fun. Like, how do you do play-by-play? It sucks so much. Yeah, it's really good to have the live blogs for, you know, posterity for, you know, so people can, in case they, because a lot of people tell us, like, I didn't get a chance to watch, so I'm going to read what you do. And Nolan, I'm going to shout you out, man. You do a good job. You insert enough humor into an otherwise dull show to make the live blogs readable, even though it's like 4,000 words. And that's what I always tried to do is I just, I had to insert my own humor. At first I told them, don't editorialize, just say what happened. And then at that point, it's like, okay, but I'll kill myself if that's the fucking rule. You got to let me get goofy. So, yeah, get goofy, dude, because fuck, that shit is brutal otherwise. <laughs> it's so tedious. There it's was, the- uh, like, there, there's, like, UFC shows are super long. WWE pay-per-views are super long. Like, yeah, it's and it's so much work trying to keep up. 
<laughs> like it, it's really props to Nolan for being able to do it, man. Because he, he does now. He does three a week at minimum, sometimes four. And the WWE no, he does keeps four. adding. Yeah, and like the WWE yeah. keeps adding shows. Yeah, he was while we while we've been doing the show, he had to do the main event live blog. Even though we already knew the results, and he does SmackDown, he does Impact, TNA. You're gonna have to start watching some TNA, Roth, because we're gonna have to talk about it. Man, do I really have to start watching TNA? <laughs> Let Just me watch look. the high spot stuff, man. Like you know, the, catch up the results in the pay per views. We won't talk about it too much because it's not where our big business comes from. But I, I mean, the, the one thing that really fucked like fucked me up on TNA, dude. Like they really fucked up King Mo's debut. So oh, that's terrible. So badly. Yeah, like how he's not a baby face. I'm sorry, he is not. He's a heel. That dude is born to be a heel because he's just kind of like he seems like a good dude, but he doesn't come off like a good dude. If that makes sense, right? Like he doesn't project a good guy image. He projects like a bad guy. No, he should be like a, like a cocky swagger guy. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. you don't let him cut a promo. It was the most, it was the and all he does is shove. Oh, like, who is that? Austin. Uh, Bobby Roode or Austin, I don't know. Yeah, Bobby Roode, was, yeah Bobby Roode. Like just shoved him, and that was, and then didn't drink a beer, didn't drink the beer. He and they didn't even explain him. his character. He comes out wearing a fucking like a robe, and they're calling him King, and he's a you're you're wearing a robe and being called King, and you're a good guy, you're a baby face. Like that's never how it's been in pro wrestling. No, you're it, always the asshole. Yeah, the King is the asshole. You know, so uh, yeah, I just it was like the worst way to introduce him to not. They didn't give him any video packages, no vignettes to get him in. Like, they just expected people would know who he was. Like, he fought for Strike Force, guys. Nobody gives a shit about Strike Force. Strike Force and Sengoku and M1. Yeah. <laughs> like... yeah. And he failed the drug test. <laughs> like, he's, there's no reason for anyone to know who this guy is. And I'm not talking bad about King Mo. I like King Mo. I think he's, I was going to post a fucking interview that uh, ULT MMA did with him outside at Bound for Glory. But, I just, I mean, <laughs> he's not going to bring in a ton of hits. And especially if people don't know who he is, and that's why you have to introduce him to the fucking audience. So, yeah, TNA blew that really bad. Uh, so badly. So badly. So, yeah, but Ross sucked this week. Hopefully, and- hopefully next week is good. Uh, now, uh, what I'm thinking is that uh, with, with, with we, we got Hell in a Cell coming up. Next what week's else? a go-home. Next week's a go-home show? Yeah. And I'm I, I'm really stoked. I, I'm the one the one thing is I'm, I wish that every single match at Hell in a Cell actually had to happen in a Hell in a Cell, just because I would like to see the uh, the tag team tournament finish in uh, in the Hell in a Cell match. Wait, what? Uh, like I, I wish every single match had to happen in Hell in a Cell, like oh, in, the, in, in the in the actual cha- like chamber man. Like to just go the full length with it. If you're gonna make it a gimmick pay per view, make them all do it. Yeah, like how awesome would it be seeing that tag match in Hell in a Cell? Yeah, that'd be so rad, and I'm really stoked that they're bringing back the tag team division. Yeah, yeah, we we had heard that when Triple H was taken steadily gaining more and more power backstage, that that was one of his big charges was we're going to bring back the tag team division, and then nothing happened for the longest time, and then finally they start, you know, they put Brian and Kane together, which no one could have predicted that to be as big a hit as it's been. I mean, Dude, that's, that's so been, money. That's awesome. so money. That's, that's that's such a money tag team. I'm really pissed that that it seems they're going to be dropping the belts. I really wish that they would uh, that that they would actually continue their run because they're so much fun to watch. Well, the, that's the fucking thing that sucks is they're awesome, but WWE's burning them up, dude. They got three hours to fill, and so we end up getting 20 minutes each episode of. Brian saying, I'm the tag team champions, and Kane saying, no, I'm the tag team champions. And eventually it's like, and this is getting a little old. You can't keep it fresh for as long because they have so much more time to fill. And it's like, I hope USA is paying them a lot of fucking money for that third hour because it, it has done nothing good for the product. It, it's, actually declined, it, it's actually killed the product, in my opinion. And the ratings aren't... Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, no, it, it, it's really affected it. Like, I'm, I'm having a hard time... Like the, it, it's emotionally taxing to to stay uh, pay attention and, and stay interested for three hours, and yeah. I love the two hour show, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I sh- you should not ever come out of a show feeling like 
well, fuck, that's finally it's over. You should never feel that way. And with the overrun, it's more like three, three hours and 10 to 15 minutes. Yep. That's way too fucking long. Like that's a pay-per-view. Their, their regular flagship television program, weekly episodic is longer now than their actual pay-per-views. What's, what's so special about the pay-per-views now? I don't, I just don't get it. It's the only thing that would make sense is that USA said we want, because it does the hours, the way they break down is the third hour gets less. Um, they get less viewers now, but the first hour is big enough that it's bigger than what had previously been in that slot, which was NCIS like by like a million and a half. So USA obviously is like, well, they don't, you don't have to hit huge home runs, 5 million, you know, 5.5 million viewers. You're doing 3.8, 4.0. That's really good. That's better than what we had before. But like WWE should have put their foot down and been like, okay, we know you're offering us more money, but we're fucking up our product by doing this. Like WCW did this. There's precedent. Their company went out of business. People got tired of that shit real fast. And WCW was in a better place when they went to three hours. They had the roster to support three hours. WWE doesn't. WWE doesn't have, a, doesn't have the roster to do two hours, man. Like, let's be honest with that, too. They really don't have the roster, especially because they split it. Yeah. And they, they didn't even really split it at this point anymore. I mean, it's they just have guys work both shows, or they have SmackDown guys work on Raw with the idea that they'll get more over so people will watch SmackDown more, which, you know, I don't, I don't know. Keith says the uh, it's half a season of a 30-minute comedy show in one night. I think he's talking about Brian and Kane. It really is. It is. That's, yeah. that's completely and that's, true. And you burn, you'll burn that out because that's not your core product. That's not your core. That's not what we're turning in for, ultimately. But, I mean, I don't know. It's sort of a low period right now, though, too, because it's October. Hell in a Cell never does well on pay-per-view. We're just around the corner from Survivor Series, which is usually does well, TLC, which does well, and then the fucking Royal Rumble the chamber and then WrestleMania 29. So we're getting ready to get to some really fucking good shit, man. I can't wait for Royal rumble this year. Dude, The rumble is the greatest thing in the history of the world. I'm going to be doing so much cool shit on cage side for the rumble. You guys watch for it. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to be here for cage side live. Who knows? Maybe we'll do some special shows if we can convince Erica. Yeah. And and maybe, maybe I can get, yeah, maybe I could be over here for, for everything, which I'm going to be like, I I love, I love your, your, your guys coverage on, on wrestling so i'll still be on on cage side seats giving my little commentary in the uh in the comment section for sure we're in this for the long haul guys and um so yeah we'll be back we're gonna be doing this every wednesday um i, f- I flirted with the idea of changing i was like man because i didn't even realize that's how over the main event show is i didn't even realize we were deliberately going up against it and they're like, people are like, they, why did they spoil the Kofi Kingston Miz result? And they were like, they spoiled it because they realized that they're going up against Cade Side Live. We, we counter programmed. We uh, counter programmed WWE. Fuck them. Sorry, Ion. And, 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 and judging by the comment section, we, uh, we had better ratings than Ion. And that wouldn't surprise me. I'm going to be honest. That actually wouldn't surprise me. It's Ion yeah. Television. Yeah. We, uh, we, the comments picked up. They were slow at first, but it looks like they picked up. Yeah, there's a shitload of comments in here. So thanks for joining. I know it's a different. I know it's a different day, and it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. But I know a lot of you used to say you couldn't stay up so late. Now you don't have to. And you, there was a number you can call in. Remember, cell phones don't pussy out like last time. So many of you would always be like, "Well, I want to call in," and then you never did. You got no excuse now. No excuse. So we look forward to hearing from you in the future if you actually bother to call in. But that's our hour. Uh, we're, it's awesome to be back, Roth. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for doing the show. Uh, we're going to have a lot th- of fun, man. Thank you for doing the show. You guys have no idea how long it took me of complaining to Gino on Gchat, saying that, hey, let's have a wrestling show. I'm so stoked to be here. I'm so stoked to do this. Like, I'm, I'm really, the, the only word that really comes to mind is stoked. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm in this for the long haul with you guys. And we're also, um, if you're listening to this, uh, Hollywood Wallace, uh, he, he was coming to me with, he wanted to get on the show. We're going to do an entire show, me and you. And I think he's going to keep kayfabe for the whole show. I'm not sure. I'm not, yeah, he's, he's our kayfabe writer. He does wrestler rankings. 
and he speaks basically only I don't think he's ever broke character on the site. And now I want to get him on the on the podcast and I want to see if he can hold character because I'm not going into character. I'm going to be shooting the whole way if he can hold character throughout the entire show. So if you're listening, man, I did not forget about you. I'm hoping for one show of just complete Geno time. Oh, it'll happen. Believe me, there wasn't any Geno time today, but it'll definitely happen. It's yeah, it's happened quite a bit. Yeah. Somebody created an image, Ultimate Warrior screaming and Geno time in red. Yeah, it's accurate. One of my buddies, uh, the other JD, actually commented, he imagine that all you do is yell all the time. So, um. <laughs> what's up, man? If you're still listening, NBA sucks. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for today's show. We look forward to hearing all your feedback now that we're done. And tune in next week. We love you. Later, dude. The Giants. Russell Radio. Everyone has a place. Ladies and gentlemen, it is.